How's it going, everybody? This is Nathan at Kitten Equipment Company. We are Northern Kentucky and Greater Cincinnati Area's Five Paw Premier Coyote Dealer. And I didn't do this on purpose. I, I promise I didn't. Uh, it just kind of happened that we got another trade in. Uh, we have a Mahindra 1635 Hydrostat. Uh, this is 2019 or 2020, I can't remember. Uh, one of those two years, but it's current production. It's the same as the new ones. Um, there may be something small in here they've changed. I don't think there is, but if, if there is and I'm wrong, correct me. Um, but somebody traded this in. So that gives me the opportunity to really get my hands on it and to use it. Uh, it's only, it only got 200 hours on it, so I can, you know, get an idea of what they're like after you get a little bit of time on them and, and, uh, but still have something that's new enough and clean enough where I can do a comparison on this versus my new Coyote tractor, um, that we, we sell here at Kitten Equipment uh, and kind of see what makes them different. So I like to do that. I did it once about a week ago on the subcompacts and then here we are a week later, somebody came in looking to trade in that 1635. Um, and, uh, now I have the opportunity to do it on a CK series, or this is a, a compact tractor. Uh, I think they call theirs compact utility. Coyote still considers it a compact, but this is almost the best selling tractor size in America. You know, you have, this is a Coyote CK. Um, you have a John Deere uh, three series, a Kubota L series. It is a very, very common size. So I figure this is gonna be something very popular for people to see, um, especially considering that Coyote and Mahindra are, uh, Coyote has is, is beat them out recently in, in terms of um, you know sales, but they are both direct competitors to kind of the, the tractor somebody might look at if they're not looking at John Deere or Kubota and just comparing those two. If you're looking at the third and fourth and fifth place tractors, Coyote and Mahindra are right there next to each other. So uh, I feel like this is gonna be a very popular video. Hopefully some people get some really useful information out of it. So I'm gonna go over them. I'm gonna talk about uh, every single section of it. This is probably gonna get a little bit lengthy, so feel free to skip to the end. Um, as I go through some different specs, I'm gonna have stuff pop up on the screen so you can kind of see uh, the numbers as I'm going over them. You can see them on paper. And I, I wanna talk about everything from front to back, underneath some th theories, the way the the uh, the operator station lays out um, just everything and I'm gonna go over it and hopefully you can get an idea at the end at the end I'm also gonna look at price I'm gonna look at what our our local market looks like here and what we're currently selling them for in uh, September of 2022 so it could be different where you're at but I think once you get to the end you're gonna be fairly interested in uh, and the differences because it's it is a lot more now that I can see that thing and you know have my hands on it it's 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 kind of funny um, so anyway I'll start from front to back and uh, we'll go from there so we're gonna start from the loader first all right so here we are starting with the loaders and this gentleman who traded this in uh, he did bulldoze a little bit with this and if you ask tractor dealers one of their biggest complaints is that people treat these things like bulldozers when they're not uh, so there's a little bit of damage to his front bucket uh, we don't you know ignore that that could happen to anybody if they really abuse these things so remember this is a used tractor it has 200 hours on it it is for sale actually if you're interested but um, imagine it if it were if it were new you know compare it to the brand new one next to it so starting from the front we both have skid steer quick attach right that's normal on these so skid steer quick attach on the Mahindra as well as on the Coyote we'll go over there next um, one thing I did find a little bit interesting on the bucket on the front of this so I think the factory bucket width is 62 inches on the Mahindra um, but if you look at it from the top they've actually got it angled in so the the edge is the same you know the, the width is 62 inches where the Coyote is uh, either 60 or 66 whichever you choose um, but because of the shape of this, it's it's restricting the inside heap capacity. So I actually didn't, I couldn't find a posted heap capacity number on the website. Um, I know the Coyote, I think is 9.3 feet on the 60 inch bucket and a little over 10. Uh, yeah, 9.39 cubic feet on the 60 and a little over 10 on the 66. Um, I didn't see the heap capacity of this bucket, but I can assure you it is a lot less because the way they have it angled in, the, the back is much less wide than the front is. So you'll have to look at that whenever you, uh, whenever you look at them in person and see if they still do that. This is the original factory bucket, the 1635L uh, on the 1635L loader. So this is all still current production, but I thought that was a little funny. Um, so skid steer quick attach, we went over that. Uh, they both do come with the grill guard. So that's nice on both of them. Um, the loader quick attach system I thought was a little weird. Um, 
this is more like what we see on like the old school subcompact tractors but uh, if you're going to take this loader off on the mahindra you have this framework here that comes up you pull this pin but you have to get the weight transferred to that side so when you do that um, on the coyote you have these really cool legs on both sides they're spring loaded right so we pop these legs off hold on spring loaded it's tight it's new i'm using it one-handed there we go so you sit these down and there's these pins down here and I'm, I'm not actually doing it the right way i have to lift the loader up in the air um, to pin this in on both sides but you have a leg on each side for that right and what's also cool is if you look inside of there so there's legs on both sides if you look inside of here you have multiple positions for that pin right there's four different notches there so what that allows you to do is sit that leg at varying heights if you have different attachments up here. You know, this is skid steer quick attached, so who knows what kind of future bucket you may have. You may have long bottom buckets. Uh, you may have a grapple, you may have pallet forks. Whatever implement you have, you have a, a little bit of adjustment to get, you know, depending on what kind of length you have, to get it all even so that the loader can still come off even if you don't have the bucket, you know, the original factory bucket on. So that is standard on there, the way those legs come off. On the Mahindra, you have this uh, pin on leg and you basically pull it out, unpin it, you pin it onto that tube and it sits in the middle um, and that's what keeps it propped up. Now, the other issue is because you don't have uh, a leg on each side, uh, it's kind of relying on the bucket to keep it from wobbling left and right. You don't have, it's, it's three points of connection instead of four, if that makes sense. So um, it's a little bit less reliable. If you try to if you try to put a center stand on there and it tilts one way or the other, it can become a real problem trying to get it back on because it'll be tilted left or right. Um, but that is a difference just in the way they come on and off. Um, here, I wanted to also look at the greasable uh, pins. So the pins bolt on the same way. Coyote has nice recessed grease fittings here. I'll show you. So see the grease fitting on the inside of every one of these? So you just get to them right from the side. Uh, those are you know, things that you wanna grease pretty often because it moves a lot. Um, on the Mahindra you have, um, on, they're on the top, they're not on the side. So there's one there that's easy to get to. Uh, let's see, this one's not as easy. It's up hidden in there. Let's see if you can see it, it's, it's in there. Um, on the back, they had to cut a hole here so you get to it from the top. So you kind of have to dig for these. Uh, I've, I think that one's on the bottom as well. Yeah, so you kind of have to mm, top or bottom. You're constantly moving around trying to get the grease uh, grease gun on there. On the coyote, they're right on the side. So the pins are a little bit less greasable. Um, the other thing is I like to go over how these are made. And the steel is pretty nice. Uh, the welds are okay. Um, so it's, it's beefy enough, it should be. Uh, the hoses, I'm not always a fan of the way they do this. And I'm gonna show you on the uh, driver's, or the passenger side over there. You have the flexible hoses and you have to have flexible hoses there but here uh, they have this armored and that's necessary because these hoses can get caught or cut on different things so they just stuck an armored plate over the soft hoses if you look on the coyote they actually go to hard lines so what, as soon as it starts to get in an area where it might become precarious wherever you're going coyote actually switches from soft lines to hard lines through all that and they armor it as well and you'll notice that goes all the way up the side of the loader right and then it, it goes to soft whenever it needs to again up here. So it's hard lines anywhere they can put them. They have soft lines, you know, the soft lines are necessary, like I said, but when they can put hard lines in, they do. Uh, if you look on the Mahindra, this is all a mess of soft lines over here. Um, actually, that was that was one of the customer's biggest complaints. Is Again, he was bulldozing with it, full disclosure, but he was uh, breaking a lot of lines. Um, so the lines are soft, and then up here they put armor on them. But they're they're soft all the way through so there's a lot more to go wrong um also once we get up here that's fine that's all okay that i'm not a huge fan of uh, when you actually get to the loader valve body right this is the valve body that's where all the hydraulic lines run to you have cables that run to the back um, and those are controlled by your lever that's how that works so you you move the lever that pulls cables one way that opens spool valves and that sends fluid where it needs to go um but it's all exposed. All that crap is right here, right? It's underneath the tractor. Um, this is armored, it's metal, but there's cables exposed, there's lines exposed that could very easily be broken. Um, on the Coyote, we have a little bit of a cleaner design. 
So the lines run along the inside, the quick attaches on the outside, so it's very accessible. And then you have these armored, see they wrap the, the lines. So you have one set of lines that run back here. And if you actually look, you can't really see it, but the valve body is back behind, uh, tucked up away from everything. So all the, the breakable stuff is way up out of the way, not hanging off the side right here. And, and I'm telling you, that's, that's something that you're, you're gonna encounter all the time if you're driving through the brush. So um, the way the loader lines are run on the Coyote are definitely much better, I have to be honest. Uh, don't take my word for it, go look at them yourself and you'll see what I'm talking about. So that's kind of a fit and fitament. Uh, they both have the same joystick valve in the, in the nice spot, I like that. The Mahindra sticks it right there on your right hand, that's really the ideal spot. It gives you a little bit more access to get on and off both sides and it's more comfortable. Um, so that's great. I will say this material feels a little flimsy, um, but that's totally up for you to, to kind of look at and decide. Um, but yeah, that's an idea on the loader. The most important thing, we need to talk about specs on the loaders, right? Because everybody's looking at loader lift capacity. So the Mahindra, uh, and you should see this pop up. I'm also going to put it in the description below. The Mahindra has a lift capacity of 1,650 pounds at 87 inches, uh, which is full height at pivot pin. Um, so 1,650 pounds is very respectable. That's gonna compete with a lot of manufacturers who are still in the 1,000 to 1,200 pound range. Um, very good, but they do advertise that it is the most uh, lift capacity in the industry and that is blatantly not true. There's multiple manufacturers, multiple manufacturers that beat that, uh, including Coyote. So Coyote's, and this is a little bit different, they measure them differently, uh, but you can do a little bit of math and extrapolate and figure out what the actual capacity is. So Coyote measures theirs uh, at 60 inches, a nice even five foot off the ground, uh, about here, I guess. Uh, 60 inches at pivot pin is 1,835 pounds. Uh, if you go all the way up to full height, and full height is actually taller, um, this is gonna get up to 90, Three, well, actually, I don't know. You know, what's weird is Mahindra doesn't give the measurement if, if it's if it's at pivot pin, but that is usually the factory measurement. I don't know if it's at pivot pin or if it's, a, if it's at bucket end, uh, their 87 inch measurement. But if it's at pivot pin, like it usually is measured, the Coyote's at 93. So it'll lift about six inches higher. And if you go all the way up there, you're gonna be dealing with 1,700 to 1,750 pounds. So uh, 50 to 100 pounds higher lift capacity. Not an incredible amount, but it is still higher and Again, if we're dealing with, uh, you know, tractors that are competing with each other, 100 pounds is 100 pounds, right? So there's lift capacity, there's build quality, there is uh, uh, the way things are laid out, the easiness of, of maintenance, the way the loader comes on and off. I mean, that's, that's important. So we're done with the loader. Now we are going to go to the operator station. All right, so we're going to talk about operator station. Um, and you would think, okay, well, there's only so many ways to skin a cat, but... Your butt's going to be on this thing a lot, so it's pretty important. The way things are laid out, the standard equipment, um, it's, it's important. So we're probably going to talk about this for a while. And I do want to clarify something, too. Uh, I forgot to mention in the beginning, this is the 3510SE, right? CK3510SE with the Hydrostat transmission. So Coyote makes two. Uh, they're going to make a basic 3510, and then they're going to make the 3510SE. Um, and it's important that I distinguish those because the, the SE does have a whole lot of stuff. Uh, it has everything, almost every single option that's in the book that you can add to a basic CK3510. This has standard equipment, plus it has a couple other things that you can't add to a basic CK3510. So I used this one, and I'm not, I'm not using this one because, okay, this one's gonna blow that one out of the water because this is the deluxe model. This is actually still cheaper than that. And I wasn't gonna talk about that until the end, uh, but you can get the nice every single bell and whistle coyote for cheaper than the basic Mahindra. And I wanted to kind of get the dollar amounts as close as possible, okay? If you're gonna spend $26,000, what are you gonna get? Um, and that's, I feel like that's a better way to review because some people do these reviews where they're talking about two different models that are, okay, they're the same class, but they're so far away in dollar amount, why does it really matter? I, I mean, you get what you pay for, right? So um, I feel like this was a better, more honest option to compare to that because this is still actually cheaper. Um, anyway, so this is a CK3510SE and we're gonna go over the operator platform here. So uh, you get the deck mat standard and you got a nice open on and off on both sides, right? So um, it is a nice clear operator uh, platform. There is a little bit of a hump there and that's normal on these. There's a drive line that goes through there so they have to put that little hump to cover it. Um, on the CK, you have all kinds of standard features up here. So here's your horn. 
turn signal and headlight relay. Uh, you have tilt steering. Um, you have cruise control standard equipment, and that is actually a push button cruise control. We're gonna talk about that further. You have tilt steering. Um, here's your high, medium, and low range on your hydrostat. Uh, and then you have a cup holder, or I'm sorry, phone holder. Uh, a little bit of an, like a, kind of like a nut and bolt holder back here. Your cup holder's on the other side. Now uh, you have your differential lock, four wheel drive, three point speed control. Let's go over to the other side. You have loader joystick valve, and again, that's right there on the right where it needs to be. It's actually a little bit in a better position. Um, it's not, not really out here in the way. It's more recessed inside, a little bit closer to you. And again, you still have a lot more room on this side. Um, and then you have your little loader lockout. You have your three-point raise and lower. You have two hydraulic remotes, and we're gonna talk about that. Uh, there's that cup holder I was talking about and your push button independent PTO, and we're gonna talk about that too. Um, most importantly, let's talk about the seat. So this is the same seat that Coyote puts on all of their big tractors, um, all the way up to the big RX, uh, 75 horse, has the same seat in it. And it is a fully adjustable suspension seat, nice outdoor weatherproof material. Um, the armrests come standard on the SC, uh, CK. So this is, this is one of the things that the regular, S, uh, regular CK won't have, but this does. Um, fully adjustable suspension, remember that. So this is a really nice, here we're gonna sit on it. My 240 pounds two years married now it's extremely comfortable if i can bounce up and down on it if i'm hitting a bump in the field somewhere uh, it just takes it right out Re remember a tractor doesn't have a suspension you know there's no leaf springs under this like you'd have in a truck uh it's just a frame the only thing that's really going to keep you from bouncing around is the, the fact that the front axle pivots a little bit and this suspension seat so it is really a nice feature and they put it on all the ck's even the base model uh, very important it is also adjustable for, forward and back. So you've got a little bit of adjustment to it. Um, so yeah, so let's let's go back over here and we're gonna talk about a couple things on this one. Um, so the operator station is a little less wide. Uh, you'll have to see that for yourself. Um, nice big dash, nice big seat, but it is a little bit less wide uh, left and right. A um, little bit more rudimentary over here. So we're dealing with, well, we still have a three range hydrostat. You have low, medium and high. Um, so that is the same. Um, you have, and this is important on a base model, uh, tractor this size, like just like the Coyote CK base model. Um, this has a lever operated in, it's called a live PTO. So basically when you turn the PTO on, you hit the clutch, you move the lever into gear, and then you release the clutch and the PTO turns on. It starts spinning your bush hog or your rear implement. Um, so that is the similar system to what they've had for 30 years. It's, it's very normal. Um, again, the base Coyote has that, but on the SE Coyote, you have a push button independent PTO. So this yellow button here, um, you can be driving along. You don't have to stop. You don't have to hit a clutch. You just push that button, your PTO is on. You push that button, your PTO is off. Uh, so much more user friendly. Um, you don't have to stop or do things. You can, you can turn it off in an emergency very quickly. Um, just a little bit simpler it completely decouples the rear end of the tractor from the transmission so there's no clutch no weirdness there so a little bit more of an advanced pto on the coyote um over here there would be a section for a mid pto uh you've got your same differential lock four wheel drive three point speed control um you got a horn although i think i have to have the key on to make that work um you got your headlights and uh, you know uh, dash light relay and your turn signals there you do have tilt steering on this it's a little bit funky. I had to learn how to use it, but it's this lever down here. So you push the lever and the steering wheel tilts. Um, down here, you also have um, your parking brake lever in the middle. And then this is your cruise control. And I actually, I want to go over that cruise control too, because they're not all the same. So this cruise control is a very simple mechanical cruise control. Um, you drive forward, you pull this lever, and it locks the pedal forward, right? So... If you are driving along, you just lock that, and bam, your pedals lock forward, great. The issue I have with that is that the only way to turn that cruise control off is to physically hit this lever, and it's off, right? Now, that's a big difference because that's a basic mechanical linkage. The Coyote cruise control is a little bit more advanced. Um, it is a push button cruise control, and it still uses mechanical linkage, but it's just a little electric button that, that triggers that linkage. Um, because it's electric, you can turn it off in more ways. So if I'm driving forward and I suddenly want to stop, I don't have to go down and find the right lever and turn the cruise control off. 
because uh, if, if you if you hit the brake on a tractor right and you're driving forward a tractor has a lot of power um, even a small one like this it will drive against the brake the brake isn't going to suddenly stop you um, you have to physically stop the transmission in order in order to stop going forward so you can't just hit the brake and save it if it's if the pedal is stuck driving forward and you are moving forward the brake will not stop it so on the coyote because it's an electric switch instead of a mechanical switch if i hit the brake it will turn the cruise control off electronically if i hit the button it will turn the cruise control off electronically on the on the mahindra and i tested this if i'm driving forward and i hit the brake or i hit anything i am driving forward um, so it's, <laughs> it wasn't very comfortable when I learned that the first time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a mechanical cruise control. So it is on there. That's how it works. Um, the other thing I wasn't a huge fan of is the pedal. And this is going to be totally up to personal preference. Uh, I have big feet. I'm a size 14 American. So, um, it's got a treadle pedal and that's okay. It actually, it works okay. You drive forward, right? You have to pull your foot back and drive back. Or some people will suggest you use your heel, but I can't. I don't get that much motion out of my heel. I don't, I'm not, I, I actually prefer to use my toe. So I'm moving my, my leg back and forth. One thing I was not a big fan of is I want to disengage the brake, watch. So the brake is disengaged, it's out there. If I drive forward, unless I do it a very specific way where I move my foot back, if I just mash my foot forward, it hits the brake when I hit the pedal. I have to very gently move my toe and only use my toe to go forward. And even when I do that, if I'm up even three or four inches off of the pedal, my toe makes contact with the brake pedal so it's a little bit of a i guess if you have a big foot and I'm, I'm not even i'm wearing loafers today if i were wearing boots that would be much worse so if somebody's out uh you know in the field with boots on they have a big foot like i do they might not prefer that you'll have to drive it it's totally personal preference see if that works for you i don't prefer it i think that brake is in the way of the pedal um and i'm not a fan of the rocker pedal anyway on the coyote let's walk over here I'm gonna get my cardio in today. On the Coyote, you have a side-by-side -side pedal. So forward and reverse. Um, that achieves two things. One, it's much better for big feet. Um, the brake is not up here in the way. It's, it's a hanger brake on the side. Um, and you can forward and reverse. You don't have anything in the way right here. You can climb on and off without hitting the pedal. Uh, just a little difference in opinion there. So you just have to decide what's best for you, but I encourage you to go to your local dealer and drive both. And figure that out um, so there's the pedals and then a few other things over here on the other side so we've got loader control we've got the three-point control we have a little 12 volt charger and a phone holder next to it and then we have the uh, the throttle and I'm not a huge fan of the throttle on this either um, the coyote throttle is up here in the dash right so here we are it's right in the dash built in with all the other controls um, so you can manipulate it right there while you're driving while you're steering the mahindra throttle is down to the right so it's you kind of have to like it's like you're reaching in your pocket on the right side it's right down there on the on the right and you have to reach down and grab it and this one's got a little bit of it needs a little bit of love and a little bit of grease but you have to manipulate it from down there it's not right here on the right side so again maybe personal preference just look at it um, on the seat this is the nice uh, Mahindra seat. It's the same one that they put on the little subcompact I reviewed. I like it, it's comfortable. Um, it folds forward so you can get the weather off of it. Um, the one thing I wasn't a real big fan of, one, there is no suspension, right? It's not a full suspension seat like on the Coyote. It's on these springs like a lawnmower. So it's probably not gonna work quite as well. It's not gonna take as much force out. Um, also, uh, there's not quite as much adjustment in it. Um, you do have armrests, but um, it's a little bit more of a non-suspended, cheaper version. I don't know. You just sit on them both and see what you like, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's the operator station. So, uh, you know, look at the official specs and you'll see there's a lot less standard equipment on here. Um, it's not laid out, in, in my opinion, quite as well. You'll, you'll have to see for yourself. So look at both of them. Hopefully that gives you an idea. Let me know if I missed anything. Oh, one more thing, one more thing. Um, so on the hood, metal, right? Metal, um, the sides are metal. On the fenders, I got some grease on me. On the fenders, you have plastic on the outside and you have metal on the inside. I thought that was an interesting kind of choice that they did. I think they did it because this is 
a little more breakable. So I guess if somebody breaks this portion, um, they can just replace this and not have to worry about the metal fender. Um, on the Coyote, everything is metal, metal, and the fenders are metal all the way back as well, except for this very back part that is replaceable if you were to break that. So metal fenders all the way through, some plastic on the Mahindra, but not a ton, um, just a difference in design. So yeah, that's the operator station. Um, look at them both. Let me know if, uh, if you got any other questions on them. I've been all over both of these. Next, we are going to go to the engine. Okay, here we are. I'm a little out of breath because I feel like I just had to go to war to get this thing open. But uh, basically to get this hood open, you have to, you pull these pins on the left and right, right? Um, and you get those locked out kind of like that on both sides. And then you, uh, you, there's a latch here, but instead of the latch being left or right, it's up and down and I had to, I probably just because it's old I had to wrestle with it a little bit to get it open um, on the coyote you have a similar design but the pins aren't down on the bottom they're up here on the top so you just pull these and you can lock them out and then you pull forward um, and then you have a, a, a pull tight instead of a push up and down it's on the side not on the front so you can get to it from the side it's a little bit easier but um, regardless this engine let me pull up the official specs. Here we go. Um, here we have a 36.2 horsepower, 125 cubic inch, which is about two liter. Uh, it's a three cylinder common rail diesel uh, with DOC. And I tell you, we're gonna hammer on this for a little bit. Um, we'll go over here. Coyote is 111.4 cubic inch, 34.9 horsepower, three cylinder common rail diesel with DPF. So DPF is the one that you're going to see on the majority of the Japanese uh, or other Asian made tractors. It's a diesel particulate filter system. Um, it is uh, pretty common. It's been common for a long time now since emissions hit. Basically it is this silver canister over here. You see it? That silver canister in the back right? That canister fills with soot over time usually about 50 hours is uh is what i tell people um zero to 50 hours if you're using it the right way and once it gets full uh, or close to full it's going to want to do a regen a regen is basically just a system where it uses the existing engine heat and opens up and burns out and if you look it sits in the muffler so it's not like a separate burnout system it's a pipe and it's right there where the muffler is. It's just at the end of the muffler. So uh, it just uses existing engine heat, opens up, burns out the stuff that's inside. It takes 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, but what's cool about it is they've got the software set up in a way now where it basically does it on its own. Um, there is a light that tells you it's on and you have to be up at operating RPM, uh, which is, it's only like 1400 RPM. So it's, it's pretty normal op RPM that you're gonna be at anyway. And as long as you're there, it'll just open up. It'll do it on its own. Um, you don't have to stop using the tractor and you can cancel it. Uh, if, if it's an inconvenient time for you and you need to stop using that, uh, you know, just hit the button, cancel it, and then do it next time you get on. So it's, it's not a big deal, but, um, there are some people that are getting pretty preachy out there and whose whole advertisement strategy is the fact that they don't have that, but there is an emissions requirement so what did they replace it with so uh, doc is the system they have and it is a diesel oxidation catalyst now what is that it's basically it's, it's a little bit different but it's it's a catalytic converter is the basic way to think about it and it is this canister here that still exists in, you know it's the same spot um a diesel oxidation catalyst uses the the rare earth metals and the other stuff that's in there um <clears throat> at a certain heat, it has to be at a certain temperature. And once it gets heated up, uh, it, it burns it off that way. So it doesn't have a specific time that it has to regen. It is always doing it. But remember, it needs heat to do it. And it stays hot. Um, if, if it wasn't hot, there wouldn't be this heat shielding. Let's see if we can get in there. See that big, that heat shielding behind it in the dash? That whole system stays hot, it has to, um, in order to work. So think of it like a catalytic converter that stays hot and does a you know it's, it's like a constant region instead of a on and off region on the dpf system now people don't like these these modern emission engines um because they are more complicated because they have computers uh this does not 
they, they say it, it, no region. That's how they advertise this, right? No region. It still has a system. It has to by law. It still has a computer. It's a common rail engine. It has a computer. Um, so it's <laughs> that's the same. Uh, it has a a catalytic converter style instead of a filter that has to be cleaned out. So they say, okay, you don't ever have to replace a DPF. That's true. You don't have to replace a DPF. But eventually, like all catalytic converters, you will have to replace a DOC. I don't know which one is more expensive. They're probably very similar. But it's like they, they spent a lot of money and time redesigning the wheel. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the same. The there is no official region, so you don't ever see that light come on, but it's always hot. It has to be replaced eventually, you know, and we're talking thousands of hours, right? Like the, the DPF system on that is regulated for, uh, I think by law has to last 3000 hours. It's, it is a very long-term system that most people are never going to see. Um, but it is really similar. I don't want anybody to look at these brand new and say, Hey, I don't have any kind of you know, it's an old school diesel you can you can get an old school diesel but it has to be below 25 horsepower anything above that horsepower regimen has to has to have some sort of system and they accomplished it the same but differently um, and you're going to find a lot of tractors like uh, made in india like this one was this is an indian made engine made in brazil um, and a few different places have kind of switched over to this doc style uh, but they're really similar so Look into them both. You're going to find it's not as different as you might have thought. Um, and that might give you an idea on them. So, again, this is 36 in some change. That's 34.9. So they're about one horsepower different. This one's a little bit higher. But if you look at PTO horsepower, so the, the power actually getting to the end of the tractor, uh, this has 26 and this has 28. So it's a little bit more power to the PTO. Um, this is a little bit higher displacement. That revs a little bit higher. So... Uh, there's a kind of an old argument, uh, no replacement for displacement. You've kind of got like, let's talk about Ford trucks. You have the Ford 5.0 Coyote guys, and then you have the Ford EcoBoost guys. And there's, there's just a difference of opinion there. Um, they did not, they did not add a turbo to either of these. So they're not, they're not achieving the extra power through turbo. It's literally just through engine RPM and a little bit more modern of an engine style. Um, I think that whenever emissions hit, and this is just me spitballing here, but I think whenever emissions hit, you had some manufacturers that didn't want to completely re-engineer everything. So they kind of took a lot of their bottom ends they already had, you know, their, their actual blocks, 125 cubic inch, okay. And they kind of redesigned the top end to be a little bit more, um, you know, compliant with the emissions with the common rail system as opposed to the old school direct injection. So um, I... I think that that's you're going to see that in some manufacturers. They have a little bit more of a rudimentary, like larger, old school displacement block, and then some manufacturers like Kubota and some others, uh, Yanmar, who went with a little bit smaller displacement, but uh, you know higher RPM, kind of a more modern design, like the Coyote did. That engine is redesigned um, about 10 or 12 years ago now. I um, mean, what's unique about the Coyote engine, that 111 cubic inch? If you look at it, the 35 horse is the first one all the way up to the 60 horse and there's like 25 tractor models in between there they all have the exact same engine once they get to 45 horse they add a turbo but it's the same engine so they stick it on everything um it's very very tried and true that way you have the same engine all the way across the board if you look at the mahindra uh this tractor has this one if you go to the 40 horse it has a different one and they're very different you know you can go through all these different uh, tractors that are all really close in size, but there's a lot of different engines out there. So I don't know what that means for part support or engineering, but you have to make your own assumptions based off of that. Um, as far as accessibility, the actual physical engine, they're both really similar. You have engine oil, engine oil dipstick, fuel filters right there. You have some fuses miscellaneously laid out. Um, the front has the air filter and the battery. That's good. The radiator's right there. Over here, you got your starter and your alternator and that exhaust. So it's, it's not a you know terribly different system um as far as the way they're laid out it's just kind of the, the theory behind it and here's something else that's a little weird so uh when, when i always talk about engines 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 are the best way for me to describe when manufacturers make different things um so the coyote engine is made by coyote coyote is a, a, a korean company named daedong they just don't use that name over here for obvious reasons but it is made by them for them um, they've been making diesel engines a long time. They know what they're doing, but it is them. Uh, the Mahindra engine is also them. Uh, Mahindra CRDI uh, system is is them. Um, 
what's interesting though is this is not their tractor and i'm going to show you right here on the serial number tag so if you zoom in there let's see made by mitsubishi agricultural company uh so in japan so that's actually a good thing mitsubishi makes really good stuff i like that but it's not mahindra so there's there's something to be said for a company that makes everything themselves you know coyote makes their own engine their own transmission everything is theirs it is it's designed to, to mate with each other they made it uh mitsubishi made the frame mahindra made the engine i assume mitsubishi made the transmission um and that stuff kind of got piecemeal together and here we have this tractor um and i think they're nice i mean i, I really think mitsubishi's last a long time um, they used to make a lot of tractors back in the 80s for different manufacturers. I just, I think there's something to be said for part support. I think that when you get 10 years down the road, if you have something that needs a Mahindra oil filter and a Mitsubishi transmission filter, weird stuff can happen. You know, who knows how long that relationship's going to last. If it's ever going to dissolve, then they're going to, you know, have weird stuff going on trying to get Mitsubishi parts. Who knows? Sp again, spitballing, but you just have to make those assumptions for yourself. So, there's the, the difference in engines. The, the Mahindra has a little bit more uh, displacement. The Coyote has a little bit more PTO horsepower. Um, they have different emission systems that at the end of the day are probably gonna treat you very similarly. Um, so you just have to do some research and find out for yourself. Next, we are gonna go to the rear end. All right, here we are. So this is the back of the Mahindra. Um, and it's pretty normal, I mean, <laughs> tractor rear ends or tractor rear ends right but there's a few little things i'm going to get real nerdy on this and, and go into some detail so um, if you look back here you've got your pin type check chains that's nice you got your extendable links that's nice um, you've got multiple drawbar positions you've got this uh this drawbar plate here i'm sorry top link not drawbar the drawbar is down though that is uh, included with these uh, we do not have a flip up pto cover um, we do not have hydraulic rear remotes. Uh, the toolbox is right here. And this is a little bit of a pet peeve, but with the SMV sign, there's this plastic SMV sign back here. You can't really get to the toolbox. You kind of got to fight your way in there. That's a little frustrating, but that's what it is. Um, also down here, there's this hydraulic filter. And I assume that's the primary hydraulic filter uh, is, is right there, right? Like there's nothing, there's nothing protecting it. It is right on the bottom of the tractor. And there's, there's a hydraulic tube right in front of it. See that? So I'm not a huge fan of that, but, um, you know, I guess people, if, if anybody on here watching this video has a 1635, let me know if you've ever ripped that hydraulic oil uh, filter off of there and how that went. I'm, I'm kind of interested to know. Um, it looks like a nice cast rear end. So everything's cast. It doesn't look like aluminum. That's a good thing. On the Coyote, we have similar uh, set up here. So draw bar. It is a heavier, thicker draw bar. I encourage you to look at that. You've got your pin type check chains. You've got your extendable links. You've got your top link. Um, you've got a flip up PTO cover. That's something that, oh, it's a little tough though. Bolts are tight. There we go. There we go. So you a little bit more access to the PTO. Um, you have two sets of rear hydraulic remotes, standard equipment, right? So that's not on the Mahindra, but the Coyote is gonna give you two different sets I said we'd talk about that later. That's what these levers up here are for. Oh, got the phone. So that's standard on the Coyote. You have a toolbox that is a little bit easier to get to. Some people don't like where this is because, uh, you know, you hit a tree, it could get ripped off, but it's a lot more accessible and it's a lot bigger. Um, so toolbox is on there. Uh, fuel tank is right here on the back. So it's up out of the way. Nothing's really around it. Um, you can get to it from the back on the Mahindra. They have it in the old school spot that I'm not a fan of, but it is in the hood. There's a hole for it. There's the fuel cap. So you have to climb up on the operator station and kind of get it in there. Hopefully you don't spill fuel over your nice hood. Um, yeah, on the, the rear end, we have a cast rear end here as well. Nice and heavy, well made. Um, look at both of them, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, the Coyote filters, if we're talking about them. So on the Mahindra, they're on the back there. The Coyote hydraulic filter is tucked up there see it so it's a little bit more up out of the way um not quite as low i don't know look at both of them and you'll see what i mean um but yeah that's that's it for the rear ends so i just wanted to kind of give you an idea uh the coyote roll bar does fold and i believe the uh, mahindra does too although this might be a bolt no it's a pen yeah so they both fold down get it out of the way that works well um 
yeah so i mean i know it's kind of boring this is not the most exciting part we talked about but there is stuff back here to look at the biggest thing is probably the fact that that has a thousand dollars worth of hydraulic rear remotes on the back that are standard on there so um look at both of them you'll see what i mean uh, anyway we're going to go over an overview next we'll talk about uh, everything uh and you know kind of give you an idea and then most importantly let's talk about price right now and let's see how much cheaper you can buy that one for than this all right so you've sat this long you have looked at you, you you've looked at all the little minute details you have listened to me blabber about these two things let's talk about the big stuff so the, another big thing we didn't talk about the weight um, I also forgot to mention the three-point lift capacity, so let's go over that real quick. Uh, the three-point lift capacity on the Mahindra, um, and everybody measures this. It's actually really frustrating, and th this might be frustrating for you as a customer, so let me explain this to you. So you have lift capacity, right? Three-point hitch lift capacity. Mahindra advertises that theirs is the highest in class. Um, it may be. I didn't go look at everybody out there, but the issue is Mahindra gives you a number from here. They give you lift capacity at ball ends, right? The majority of the market measures lift capacity 24 inches off bar ends out here because that's really where your weight's going to be, right? Your, your weight mounts here, but the center weight of your implements is out here. Um, so 24 inches off of ball ends is obviously not going to be as much as at ball ends because that is, you know, leverage. Leverage does its thing, and the further out, the heavier it is. Uh, so their measurement, and I had to do some geometry, which was hard. I sell tractors. I'm not a mathematician. Um, but, uh, let's see, three-point lift capacity, theirs is 2,646 pounds at ball ends. So if you do some math um, and you get out 24 inches off, that should be around 1,800 pounds based on the, the math that I was doing, the geometric measurement to go out. Um, so 1,800 pounds, 16 inches off. The Coyote is 1,600 and I believe 31 pounds. Let's see if I'm right. Where are we at? Yeah, 1,634, or I'm sorry, 1,631 pounds, 24 inches off ball in. So a little bit less lift capacity in the rear. Um, that's, that's, you know, I, that's a thing. That's real. The Coyote lost there. Um, the, the reality is, though, if you start lifting implements that heavy, the front end is going to come off the ground. You're really not going to get that much use out of that much, but it is a thing. That is real. Um, so, yeah, that's three-point hitch lift capacity. Now, the total tractor weight, and this is much more usable data, uh, I did the tractor and the loader combined on both of them and then I assumed that you would fill the rear tires because if you buy a tractor for me we will always fill the rear tires because we like to keep you alive on our steep Kentucky hillside. So um, filled rear tires and the tires are the same size on both so that's an easy, uh, easy measurement to take. Um, the weight of the Mahindra tractor loader filled rear tires is 4,399 pounds. So uh, heavy, that's a good thing. That's gonna be heavier than a lot of the competition. Um, but it's not as heavy as the, as the Coyote. If you do the same math on the Coyote, I came up with 4,443 pounds. So we've got about 50 pounds on them. <laughs> not that much, uh, but don't let them say they're the ha heaviest tractor on the market because it's not true. Um, so yeah, total weight. Weight is gonna give you traction to the ground. Weight is gonna give you a lot of extra stability when you're using that loader lift capacity. Um, weight is gonna keep you safe on hillsides. Weight is your friend. You know, on a, on a tractor, weight is everything. So yeah, we've got uh, weight, lift capacities front and back, the way the operator station's laid out, the material, who makes it, uh, the theory of different engines and different uh, styles of, of uh, regen and all that junks. And you listen to all of it. So the most important thing is how much do they cost, right? Um, and that's kind of the big kicker. So I told you, Coyote has two different models, right? They have a CK3510, a little bit more stripped down one, and then they have a CK3510 Hydrostat. Or I'm sorry, they're both Hydrostat. SE Hydrostat. So uh, an SE Coyote, you can buy from me, let's see here, $24,700. That is using Coyote's current cash rebates. That number is liable to change. Those are good for right now. And again, right now is September of 2022. Um, but, but for 24 seven, you can buy a 3510 SE and that includes the loader. That includes the rear tires filled. Uh, that is a, a complete deal. The only thing you might have to think about is sales tax. So this is just my local dealer data, right? I pulled from local dealers websites. Your area might be different, but um, uh, um, Mahindra 1635 Hydrostat with the loader. I do not know if it, it, it includes tire fill or not because this gentleman's tires were not filled. Um, I think that was a big mistake. I think they should have filled them. But uh, 
$25,999. So 26,000 using their rebates, 24 seven using uh, our rebates for the nicer model. Now here's the big kicker. If you get the more basic stripped down Coyote that doesn't have the linked pedal and the cruise control and the, P the push button PTO, it has a more traditional PTO like this one. Um, and a few of the things you can get that for even $2,000 cheaper. So like $23,000 buys you that. So then you're $3,000 cheaper than this guy, not just $1,300 cheaper. Um, so hopefully that gives you a good idea. If you start talking about all the specs and standard equipment and, and, capacities and the way everything feels and is laid out and the manufacturer that makes them um, look at both of them in very good detail and let me know if you have any disagreements with my theories and my thoughts and I'd love to talk to you about them um, we are Kenton Equipment Company we are Northern Kentucky and Cincinnati's five Paul Premier Coyote dealer and we have these in stock so actually I have that in stock too. I'll sell that to you. Um, so just give me a call. Our phone number is 859-356-9091. Uh, or you can reach us at www.kentonequipment.com. Thanks guys. Have a good day.